Hello and welcome to section 6.3. Today we are going to look at part 1 of 6.3 and we are going to be dealing with vectors in the plane. For those of you that have taken physics, this may sound familiar or if you recall from like physical science, but when we deal with quantities such as force or velocity, these actually involve what we call mag a magnitude and a direction. Now in order to represent something that has magnitude and direction, we're going to have to use a directed line segment that has an initial point P and a terminal point Q. And we say that it has magnitude or length, and we show it like this. Now, like these kind of double absolute value type things, that means the magnitude. And I'll show you how to calculate that here in a little bit. But you can find that using the distance formula. Two directed line segments that have the same magnitude and same direction are what we call equivalent. And when we look at vectors, vectors are actually going to either be shown in your textbook with like a bold lowercase letter, or you'll see the letter with this little arrow thing above it. Both of these mean vector notation. So example one says to let vector u be represented by the directed line segment from point P, which is at 0, 0, to point Q, which is at 3, 1 and let vector v be represented by the directed line segment from r, which is the point 2, 2, to s, which is the point 5, 3. Then, when all is said and done, we want to show that, the mag or that vector u equals vector v. So in order to do this, we have to show that they have the same magnitude. So in other words, to find the magnitude of vector u, we're going to calculate this by using the distance formula. And the distance formula is the square root of your final, which is 3 minus your initial squared, plus your y value, which would be 1 minus 0 squared. And if we square root or simplify that, that gives us square root of 9 plus 1, which is the square root of 10. We're going to do the same thing with finding the magnitude of vector v. And again, we have the final, which is s. So I have 5 minus 2, the quantity squared, plus 3 minus 2, the quantity squared, which gives us the square root of 9 plus 1, or the square root of 10. So because the magnitudes of u and v are the same, we know that vector u is going to equal vector v. When dealing with vectors, we also have what we call component form. So the directed line segment whose initial point is at the origin, and the terminal point can be anywhere, but when our initial point starts out at the origin, this is said to be in standard position. So a vector whose initial point is at 0, 0 can be represented by a coordinate of the terminal point, these would be the coordinates of your terminal point, and it's called component form, and when we write something in component form, we're going to use these little bracket or pointed bracket looking things, and that just tells us that our initial point is at 0, 0. Now if both our initial and terminal points are at the origin, then we say that we have a zero vector, and it's represented with this right here. When looking at the component form of a vector, um, that has an initial point P and a terminal point Q, we are going to actually find the vector by taking the terminal minus the initial points, and they're the corresponding points. So in other words, if you look here, we're going to take Q1 and subtract P1 because Q is our terminal point, P is our initial, so it goes Q1 minus P1, and then Q2 minus P2. And we end up with a vector in component form. And remember, the pointed brackets here means a component form. And it gives us the vector v then. Now, when we're looking at magnitude, as we mentioned before, it's really the distance formula, or q1 minus p1, the quantity squared, plus the quantity of q2 minus p2 squared. And we have to take the square root of that in order to find the magnitude or the length. Now, if we calculate the magnitude to equal 1, then we say that the vector is what we call a unit vector. And if the magnitude of any vector is 0, remember that we say that it is a 0 vector. So example 2 tells us to find the component form 
and the magnitude of vector v that has an initial point of negative 2, 3 and a terminal point of negative 7, 9. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put this in component form and we'll say vector v is equal to, and I'm going to put it in component form with the point in brackets, and it's terminal minus initial, which this is going to give us negative 7 minus a negative 2, and then we're going to have 9 minus 3. So when we simplify this, we end up with a negative 7 minus a negative 2 is a negative 5, and 9 minus 3 is 6. So this right here is the vector written in component form. Now when we go to find the magnitude, which is represented by the double absolute value looking things, okay, this is found by the distance formula. Or, because I have it in component form, I can just take the square root of these right here. So I have a negative 5 squared plus 6 squared. This gives us the square root of 25 plus 36, which is equal to the square root of 61. And this would be the magnitude. The next thing we're going to look at are what we call vector operations. And we have two basic operations that we're going to look at. One is scalar multiplication. And recall, a scalar is just kind of like a coefficient or a real number. Um, and it's just kind of like it's a multiple um, of your vector. So if your scalar is greater than zero, then we say that the product of the scalar and our vector has the same direction. In other words, if I have something that's, let's say this is two units long, and I multiply that by three, I'm still going to be looking at a vector in the same direction, but it's going to be three times as long or six. However, if our um, scalar is less than zero or negative, then they're going to have opposite directions. So in the case that we used before, if we use a negative three, now we're going to look at a vector that's going in this direction instead, and this would be a negative six. When we're doing vector addition, we're going to add corresponding par parts. So I have u1, v1, and u2, v2. And we're going to, um, when you add these on a graph, what we're ultimately doing when we're adding vectors, and I'll show you a picture of this here in just a second, is we're going to move our vectors, but we're not going to be changing their lengths or directions, and we're going to align them so that the initial point of one vector will coincide with the terminal point of another. So what we're looking for then is that opposite side length, and this is what we call the resultant. This diagram here just shows you what it looks like to have a vector v, and if we multiply it by a scalar of one half, we see that it's half the length, but it's positive, so it's still pointing in the same direction here. Likewise, if I multiply it by a whole number, two, I'm twice as long as my original v, but I'm also pointing in the same direction. If I multiply by a negative, I switch that vector direction. So as you'll notice, this and this are opposite directions. And here we multiplied by a negative 3 halves, so it's one and a half times as long as our original, but it's facing the opposite direction. And here are two vectors that we have. When you are adding vectors, you might have something that looks like these. And when we add them, we're going to take vector u, and we're going to take the terminal point of vector u, and line it up with the initial point of vector v, as you can see right here. And this distance right here is really what we're looking at. This is called the resultance. That is the u plus v, or the sum of the two vectors. And likewise, when we subtract two vectors, you can see that we end up with something that looks like this here. So for example three, which will be our last example in part one, it says we're going to let u equal the vector and component form of one, two, and v, which equals the vector and component form of three, one. Now remember, component forms means that we are assuming that the initial point of each of these vectors starts out at zero, zero. So when I add these two vectors, I'm going to put them in component form, and I'm going to add one and three, which will give me four, and 2 and 1, which will give me 3. 
when I subtract, I'm going to be subtracting like terms. So I really have 1 minus 3, or a negative 2, and 2 minus 1, which is 1. Now when I multiply by a scalar, I'm going to actually rewrite these as 2 times u, which gives me 2, 4, and I'm going to subtract from that 3 times v, which is 9, 3. So now when I go ahead and subtract, I end up with 2 minus 9, which is a negative 7, and 4 minus 3, which is 1. So I end up with this vector right here. And this will conclude part one. I hope you guys have a good night, and I will see you in class tomorrow.